I'm the Warrior Witch and you can call me Nike. Okay, this time, for real, my microphone is fixed. I hope. Oh boy, okay, well, technical difficulties aside from the last two weeks, this is a topic I am very excited about because it's one that I spent a lot of time thinking about personally, and that is whether or not to call yourself religious. Now first, before we really get into the topic itself, I actually want to define two words. And I think definitions are important just as a baseline, but keep in mind that they're not rigid definitions to stick to, but we'll get into that. So the two words I want to define are religious and secular. So religious, generally meaning relating to or believing in a religion, and secular meaning things that have no religious or spiritual basis. So basically religious, not religious, or you could think religious mundane. So putting on your socks is not necessarily religious, but going to church is religious, or reading the Bible is religious, but reading a fiction book is not religious. It, it would be secular. Now, when I say that these aren't really hard and fast definitions, I mean it more in the way that we use it colloquially. So if one person uses the word religious to mean an organized religion, like Christianity, the church, that kind of stuff, but another person uses it to define personal religion. You know, you don't really have to be going to a church. You don't have to have a denomination in order to be religious. And you don't even have to be following necessarily a mainstream religion. Your personal religious beliefs can still make you religious without being a member of an organized religion, as many of us pagans are. I personally use the second definition, your personal religion, your personal gods, without necessarily being part of a formalized religion. Think solitary Wicca versus an initiatory tradition of Wicca, like Gardnerian or Alexandrian. Both people, solitary and trad, would be religious in my eyes, but not everyone's necessarily going to view it that way. Deity work and religion have a very interesting relationship in the pagan community and in the witchcraft community, because a lot of us come from some very heavy backgrounds relating to mainly mainstream organized religion, especially Christianity. And I think that there are hesitancies to use the word religious for ourselves because of that background. And I think it's important to acknowledge that because it does have a heavy impact on us. Religious trauma is really big in this community. And I know that a lot of people talk about it because I mean, it does impact us. It does. Even those who were not necessarily raised in religion, like myself, still end up in culturally religious places, like America I would refer to as culturally Christian in a lot of ways. And so even if you are like myself, someone who did not grow up with religion, did not grow up within organized religion, some of those effects that mainstream religion has on us are still pretty prominent. I think sometimes we also avoid the use of the word religious because we're almost, in a, a good way, revolting against religions that have harmed us in some way. So we sort of have this dichotomy in our heads, especially in America and many European countries, where the church as a sort of broader organization has harmed us so harshly. And so in our heads, we associate religion with the church, secular with everything else, even if what we're doing is technically religious. Now, within paganism, we also have this interesting connection and separation between working with a deity and worshiping a deity. And I think that that's an important one to bring up because it's also going to affect the sort of relationship that you have. Now, work is generally a little bit more transactional. You're calling on a spirit or a deity and whatnot to assist you in some sort of working. And worship is your more traditional uh, religious sort of ideas where you're praying, maybe you're just thanking them and bringing gratitude and, and seeing the effect that they have in the world and, and being really pleased to be able to see that, you know, all the, the normal religious type stuff, right? But there's also sometimes this question of if you're working with gods but not worshiping them, is that religious? And that's kind of going to depend on the individual definition, because for some people, yes, and for some people, no. For example, you don't necessarily have to be a Hellenist to work with Hellenic gods. 
but the religious portion is still going to come into play with that because in order to connect with them, to know their epithets, to know their mythology, to know how to work with them, what offerings to give for this transactional type relationship, you still have to delve into at least some of the religious stuff. Now, it doesn't mean that you're worshiping them, it doesn't mean that that is your daily religion, and personally I separate it out. I don't see work as necessarily religious itself, but a lot of the information on how to do the work involves religious teachings, if that makes sense. So it's, it's not practicing the religion, but it is following the guidelines about that god as laid out by said religion, whereas the worship would be more of doing the active workings in a religious sense. Now, some people would see them as one and the same, that it is all religious because you're working with a, a deity and divinity in general. There's nothing wrong with defining it that way either. That's just personally how I see it. I see work as, you know, that that transactional nature is not so much religious, but it's just following some of those guidelines to understand said deity in that transactional nature. Now, for those who do worship gods, do you have to use the word religious? I mean, no, not really. In a technical definition sense, you would be practicing religion yourself, but it doesn't mean that you have to call yourself that. And honestly, for a long time, I didn't either. I was worshiping gods, I was working with them. I did, in all senses of the word, have a religion, but I just never really connected the dots personally and didn't call myself religious until, honestly, fairly recently. Now, there's also this interesting intersection between working with gods, worshiping gods, and not interacting with them at all that I think should be covered. And this is where we get into the use of the word secular, and I would say secular craft. So it, secular craft for me, the way that I'm using this word, is any sort of witchcraft practice that does not involve deities. Now this doesn't mean whether or not you believe in them, because belief is sort of separate from this, because you could believe in deities, you could believe that they exist and that divinity exists and that religion exists and all of that, but you just don't work with them in any way, shape, or form. You don't involve deity in your life. So I think that we need to understand that there are many secular witches out there. I know that Olivia, the Witch of Wonderlust, up until the Sorcery of Hecate class, didn't do any deity work, and outside of that class, still really doesn't. Most of her craft is extremely secular, and that's great. I think that's really cool, and I think it's good to have, you know, such a large figure in our community showing you don't have to work with gods. They're common, they're out there, you know, they're, they're pretty powerful and cool, but they're not necessary to be a witch. Divinity, religion, it's not a necessary thing to practice and to involve in your relationship with magic in order to do magic. And I want to talk about Excuse me? Now let's cover the benefits of both, because I think they both have their own benefits. And I want to give equal measure of a positive outlook on both ends, because neither is wrong. I just want to have people have an ability to weigh their options, so to speak. So in terms of being religious, and I'm, I'm using this as worship and work, or just worship, as opposed to working with gods or not working with gods at all. So. In terms of the work versus worship part, ma'am, hold on. If you behave yourself, you can come in. Come here, girl. Ugh. Hello. Hi, baby. Yeah. You just gonna take a nap? Now, when it comes to what we were talking about before with work versus worship, I think that there is some benefit to be had with the worship portion to build a strong relationship with whatever deity that it is you want to work with. Because transactional is just fine, there's nothing wrong with it, but you are able to form a deeper bond with this being to better understand them because you have the religious motivations behind your reasoning to learn more about them and understand them as an entity that you would be both working with, but just developing a relationship with in general. While you can study myth and keep things transactional and not necessarily worship gods, I do think that having the religious motivation behind it can be an extra push for some people, whereas some might be more inclined in the transactional nature to learn just enough to do what needs to be done and then that's sort of it. Religion can also help with some of that inner work, and I mean this in the sense that working with a deity in a religious sense 
worshiping a deity and, and having that deeper bond with them can help people to connect more with certain parts of themselves and they can be driven through this worship and work with this deity to understand more about themselves. So for example, when I was working with and worshiping Aphrodite, she actually helped me to embrace more of my masculinity and helped with that inner work of understanding myself as a non-binary person and that weird relationship I had with gender and presentation and all of that stuff. And it was a very enlightening experience. And sure, maybe I would have gotten there on my own, and you certainly can. But for me, it was just helpful to have essentially that, that guiding hand to help me along. The other benefit of being part of a religious grouping in general, and I don't mean an organized group, but calling myself, say, a heathen, it helps me to connect with community because I now have this bond with other people through being a heathen. So say, Ocean Keltoy and Wolf the Red server, The Hold. I can connect with all of these people because they also are heathen. Now granted, not everybody in The Hold is going to be a heathen, but there is more of a community connection. We can all have this shared experience of working with these gods and studying these texts. Yeah, th this community building is very important for a lot of people. Same goes for Wicca, same goes for Hellenism, same goes for Kemeticism, same goes for anything. That community aspect is really big. And obviously you can have community outside of being religious, but the extra element of specificity sometimes can really help people because if you really want to have that religious community, it is really big for people. I mean, there's a reason that some people's lives revolve entirely around the church because that is their community. You're gonna stay here, you're gonna run away. Now let's give equal measure to being secular because there's also some benefits to that. Hi. Now in terms of being secular, some of those benefits are things like being able to focus more strongly in other areas. Obviously religion does not have to define your entire life, but I mean this more in the sense of you are more inclined to have a stronger relationship with other beings like your ancestors or your local spirits. Now again, you don't have to work with either of these, but some people are more drawn to that factor, the focus on their family and their ancestors versus a deity or a religion. You also use less resources. Let's be real, offerings are resources that we're using, and that's sort of part of the point. But in terms of choosing not to work with deities and choosing not to worship them, the, the lack of a need to give offerings does save you a little bit of time, effort, cash, you know, all those lovely things. There's also a greater focus on the self and turning inwards on your own needs and your own spirit. For some, it's very empowering to be able to do all of this work on your own and to do all of this self-discovery on your own. And, you know, like I said, I was doing some inner focus on myself when I was working with Aphrodite, and I could have done some of this on my own, obviously, but the extra empowerment I get when I am working through things on my own outside of religious context, there is something to be said about, in essence, viewing yourself as deity almost, where everything that you're doing is for yourself, it's by your own power. And that can be very, very powerful for a lot of people. I think especially if you are somebody who struggles with some inner confidence issues or not feeling like you have access to your own power, doing all the work by yourself can help in that process. I think that there is something to be said about seeing all the work that you've put in come to fruition, especially through things like spell work, and knowing that it was all through your own power. You were the one who did all of this, you were the one to get it all set up, and it was only through your own influence that it came to be. Now, like I said before, I had a very interesting experience with the word religious because I just grew up without religion. My family, my direct family, my immediate family, it's not that nobody had religion, it's just that it was never a focus in my life. So, you know, when we were very little and had to be supervised at all times, if we went to church, it wasn't you are coming to church to learn about Jesus. It was, I'm going to church and you're in my custody today, so you're going to be physically present with me, but I do not care if you listen. Because it was the adult service, not the children's service. So it was really just, we were somewhere with grandma, like, going to the bank. You know, it was it was that level of interest for us. We just didn't care because we didn't have to. There was no reason for us to be paying attention. And at home, I just wasn't raised with religion. So for me, the idea of religion was often more the idea of capital T, capital C, the church, and mainstream organized religion. 
And even once I became a witch and started doing worship of gods, I never fully connected the idea of religion and being religious with myself. Even though what I was doing was objectively, by definition, religious. It was. I think just because for me, it was never something that I identified with prior. It wasn't a thought in my head to identify with it later. Now, if I had chosen not to call myself religious even still today, despite being a heathen, it wouldn't be bad, but in a definition sense, it wouldn't be correct. But, you know, I'm not going to jump down anybody's throat who, say, is a heathen or is a Hellenist and would not call themselves religious, because that's not my call to make, and it ultimately doesn't really matter. Who cares if somebody doesn't call themselves religious, but they worship gods? Does it hurt anybody? No. Does anybody really need to care about that? No. I like being religious, but a lot of my practice for a long time is also secular. And honestly, a lot of what I do is still technically secular. I don't call my gods in for a lot of my spell work. I still have the majority of my craft as very secular and, and self-based, self-focused. It's a lot by my own power and by my own strength and will. I could call them in, sure, but you can also have a secular practice separate from a religious practice, like I mostly do. You can also combine them and have a very religious-based witchcraft practice. So you could call your gods in for guidance and you could have a more daily spell work, magical, meditative relationship with them. They, they could be very, very present in all of your magical workings and all of your practice, but there's no real one right answer. And I think that's the big thing is that this is all up to personal preference, personal choice, and what suits your needs and your practice. If you're perfectly happy having a completely secular practice, you don't do any form of religious work, great. If you like to involve your gods in every single thing that you do, every spell that you do, you like to call them in, you like to meditate with your, your gods nightly, and you have this deep, deep daily relationship with them, that's also great. Having a mixture, perfect, A+, plus, go for it. As I mentioned in my video two weeks ago, I think that our community has this inclination to tell other people that they're wrong because they're not doing it the same way that this person is and somebody attacking you because they do it this way but you don't do it this way. I think that we just need to understand that every single practice is going to look different. Just the same that even if you were in a mainstream religion, let's go with the church, let's go with Christianity, even within the same denomination, one relationship with Jesus is not going to be the same as another relationship with Jesus. And if you're, say, a Catholic, you might not work with the same saints, you know, you might not call on the same people within that whole religion to, to do what needs to be done, or to just thank them every single day, because every family is going to have a different need, every person's going to have a different need. So why would we expect the same in paganism, right? If we know that every Christian's relationship with Jesus and that whole mess is all going to be different, why can't we all be a little bit different, right? Anyway, that's all I have for you guys this week. So if you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, you should do that. I'm pretty cool. I'm moving soon, so I'm hoping that I'll stay on the same schedule even during the move, but I may be taking another week or two off, but then right back to it on schedule. Good things. Otherwise, you can follow me other places like Instagram, and I have a Patreon if you want to keep supporting me and get uh, extra content or early access content and all that kind of fun stuff. I have a Discord server, which you should join. It's a great community building thing. And if you want to hang out with other pagans, it's a great place to be. Lots of diverse practices and lots of topics that we can talk about. And I have a podcast that I do every single week called Magnolias and Magic with my two lovely friends, Georgina Rose and Anthony Wolf. And I stream twice a week, almost every week on Twitch, Mondays and Wednesdays, 6.30 Central Time. So if you want to watch a little bit more of a chaotic type vibe, that's a good one to do. Different topic every week. Sometimes it's very casual, sometimes it's very serious. Very fun. So follow me everywhere if you want to catch all of that. Otherwise, that's all I've got for you guys this week. So see you next time and blessed be.